have your Bibles with me, or with you, would you open them to the book of 2 Timothy? If you don't have a Bible, I think it might all be in your bulletin this morning. If you're able to stand out of respect to the reading of the Word of God. Begin reading in chapter 1 of 2 Timothy and then go to chapter 3. Chapter 1, beginning at verse 3. Paul says, I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience, that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. And then back to chapter 3, of the same book, 2 Timothy, begin reading there at verse 13. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned, and hast been assured of, knowing of who thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Jesus. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Bow your heads with me for a moment. We thank you for the word of God, Lord, and we pray you may speak to us from it and through it on this Mother's Day. And for that we will thank you. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. One of the great stories told about moms in America, in American folklore, was told about a child named Thomas. Partially deaf, he was a challenge to his teachers at school. He was curious about everything, especially about how things work. At one point, he came home from, a school, from the school with a note suggesting that his parents take the boy out of school. The note said, Thomas was too stupid to learn. So his mom decided to give it a try herself. And she did a pretty fair job of homeschooling. Years later, at Thomas's death in 1931, Americans paid tribute to him by turning off their house lights for one full minute. You see, it was Thomas whose inventions paved the way for incandescent lighting. That sun was, of course, I'm sure most of you got it by now, Thomas A. Edison the boy who was too stupid to learn. Who knows, the world might still be in the dark if his mom had not taken on the task of teaching a son who the school had branded as too stupid to learn. For Thomas Edison, mom was truly the best teacher. Now I've always tried to to be careful about getting too sentimental about motherhood because for some, motherhood is nothing more than an accident. And it's not always a welcome one. For other ladies, biological motherhood isn't even possible. And Mother's Day kind of has a bad ring to it for them. And for some... They think about their mothers, and their mothers weren't all that nice. 
And for others, motherhood, even under the best of circumstances, is still less than a bed of roses. But on this Mother's Day, I'm preaching without apology about the time-honored institution of motherhood. Whether she was a good mom or a bad mom, without her, you wouldn't even be here. That's right. So ponder that a little this morning. So just because of that fact, I believe she deserves some honor and some respect from you. Just because she was mom. Timothy, Paul tells us in our first scripture reading, had the privilege of being raised and taught by a godly mother named Eunice, who in turn had been raised by a godly mother named Lois. Now it doesn't always work this way because of this thing we call free will, but Timothy was the product of their godly teaching. Sometimes even godly women have children that turn out to be anything but godly. The mother of three notoriously unruly youngsters was asked whether or not she'd have children if she had it to do over again. Yes, she replied laughing, but not the same one. <laughs> Charles Spurgeon said, I cannot tell you how much I owe to the prayers of my good mother. I remember her once praying, Now Lord, if my children go on in sin, it will not be from ignorance that they perish. And my soul must bear swift witness against them at the day of judgment if they lay not hold on Christ and claim Him as their personal Savior. Amen. Abraham Lincoln once said that no man is poor who has a godly mother. That's right. Lincoln sure was a smart guy in a lot of ways, wasn't he? I just heard this morning on the news that California has a law up right now to get rid of celebrating Lincoln and Washington's birthday and instead celebrate the Communist Workers' Day. Oh. Imagine. Timothy surely would have said amen to what Lincoln said about a godly mother. When Robert Ingersoll, the notorious skeptic, was in his heyday, two college students went to hear him one night lecture. And as they walked down the street after the lecture, one said to the other, well, I guess he sure knocked the props out from under Christianity tonight, didn't he? The other said, no, I don't think he did. Ingersoll did not explain my mother's life. And until he can explain my mother's life, I will stand by my mother's God. Amen. Amen. Paul tells us here in our second scripture reading that evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. That describes our day perfectly. Evil is trying in every way imaginable to destroy the home, the family, even the very idea of motherhood. But Paul's advice to Timothy was to continue in the things which he had learned and been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them of, he said. <coughs> Who did he learn them from? Well, Timothy had many good teachers, including none other than the Apostle Paul, and he'd be a pretty good guy to say you sat at his feet and learned from him. But the best teacher of all had been his mother, and even his grandmother. See, Paul wasn't around when verse 15 said, From a child thou hast known the Holy Scripture. Who 
was primarily responsible for seeing that that happened in Timothy's life. I think most of you are smart enough to see that it was his mother, Eunice, with some help from a godly grandmother named Lois. I hope you had or have a mother like Washington Irving described in this next quote. He said, the love of a mother is never exhausted. It never changes. It never tires. It endures through all. In good repute, in bad repute, in the face of the world's condemnation, a mother's love still lives on. A mother can only love like that if she draws on God's love as her source for that love. Now when I think of drawing on love's source, it's hard not to think about Corey Ten Boom. Corey Ten Boom's family all died in Nazi concentration camps. What were their crimes? They were guilty of hiding Jews in their homes. Somehow, Corey survived the whole ordeal. The war was over. The death camps had been liberated. And Corey was speaking in various churches, sharing about God's love and forgiveness how it can be found even in the midst of a horrible place like a Nazi concentration camp. She wrote this in her best-selling book, The Hiding Place. She said, It was in a church service in Munich that I saw him, a former SS man who had stood guard at the shower room door at Ravensbrück, his prison. He was the first of our actual jailers that I had seen since that time. And suddenly it was all there. The room full of mocking men. The heaps of clothing. My sister Betsy's pain-blanched face. Betsy who had died at the hand of those Nazis. He came up to me as the church was empty beaming and bowing. How grateful I am for your message, Fraulein, he said, to think that as you say, he has washed my sin away. His hand was thrust out to shake mine. And I, who had preached so often to the people in Bloomingdale of their need to forgive, I kept my hand at my side. Even as the angry, vengeful thoughts boiled through me, I saw the sin of them. And I was reminded that Jesus Christ had died for this man. Was I going to ask for more? Lord Jesus, I prayed, forgive me and help me to forgive him. <clears throat> I tried to smile. I struggled to raise my hand. I could not. <clears throat> I felt nothing. Not the slightest spark of warmth or charity. And so again, I breathed the silent prayer as he stood there with his hand out. Jesus, I prayed, I cannot forgive him. Give me your forgiveness. As I took his hand, the most incredible thing happened. 
from my shoulder along my arm and through my hand a current seemed to pass from me to him while into my heart sprang a love for this stranger that almost overwhelmed me. And so I discovered that it is not on our forgiveness anymore than on our goodness that the world's healing hinges, but on His. When he tells us to love our enemies, Corey wrote, he gives along with the command the love itself to be able to do it. Aren't you glad that's true this morning? Now I'm not exactly sure why I felt led to tell us that story on this Mother's Day. It has nothing to do with mothers other than it talks about love. But I felt awful compelled to share it this morning. And if God is speaking to any mother or child or whoever through that story, and you're here this morning and you need to forgive maybe your mother, for what she did because she wasn't much of a mother or moms if you need to forgive that ungrateful child who went against everything you tried to teach them perhaps today would be the day to extend God's love to whoever needs it whether you feel like they deserve it or not Actually, who among us is deserving of God's love? Anyway. Well, for whatever that's worth, and for whoever it's for, I pray the Lord will use it for you, to help you. Like I said, I have no idea who that may be for. But if you need to forgive your mom, or you need to forgive your child's mom, or you need to forgive grandma for the wicked thing she did, or, or whoever it is, I say God will help you just like He helped Corey Ten Boom. And I guarantee you, whoever it is you need to forgive, was probably not near as wicked as that Nazi guard who watched tens of thousands go to their deaths, maybe even with a smile on his face. God help us. Well, we want to honor our mothers that are present here at this time. We will start, as we usually do, by presenting some special gifts to a few special mothers, first of all. Um, we'll start this morning by honoring the mother that has been a mother the longest. So, who do we have here this morning that you have been a mother the longest? I am 65 years old, and my mother is here this morning, so she has been a mother for 65 years. Is there anybody here this morning that has been a mother longer than 65 years? How long have you been a mother? 64. 64 years, mother. I've been a mother for 65 years. You've been a mother for 65 years too, Betty. 65 in March. 65 in March. Well, we've got two 65ers. So how about if we bring both of them up here and honor them both? Come on up, Betty. 
Two grams of milk here. <laughs> Them together. Do them both together, and then I want to come down and make sure I get to hug my mother. Right? You come down here and hug your mother. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll present them to both of them. How's that? Danny, God bless you. Mom, God bless you. Turn around here. Turn around. Come over, Betty. Come over here. Come on over here, Betty. Turn around here. Bring your picture over here. Okay. There you go. Okay. Yep. Look get here. both of them together, and then I want you to get one with me and my mom. Okay. <coughs> okay. Give them both a hand. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can get a hug too, Betty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was jealous, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> you want, can you move over there, Mom, and I'll get you? Get your picture, and I, let's put this down. Turn around, okay? Yeah, just turn right around here. What a privilege it is to be able to have my picture taken with my mother on Mother's Day. Amen. Amen. Okay. Good. Second time I've had the privilege of giving my mother a flower from some for something like this in church on Mother's Day. So that's quite a privilege for me. All right, we have another gift here this morning for the mother with the most children and grandchildren present this morning. Hmm? And great grandchildren. Yeah, you well. Great grandchildren are grandchildren. So, yeah. so the mother with the most children and grandchildren present this morning. How many do you have back there, Helen? It would be seven if I could count that. Seven. Well, I can't count her. Well, six. Six. And a half. How many do you have? <laughs> and a half. How many? Nine. Nine? Do we have any? I don't think we have anybody, but more than nine, do we? Nine? Okay, going once, going twice. Come on up here, shall we? You can bring that one along if you want. Oh yeah, if you're coming up the baby, Rick, just put that, you hold that, Rick, you hold it. There you go. Now look here, Rick. Don't move. Okay. I'm sure it's an honor for Rick to give it to him. All right, we have one more gift, and we're going to give that one to the mother with the youngest child present. That's the baby mighty. just come up here, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> she has a half a child. <laughs> okay, come on up. Sam. Come on, Sam. And how old is that one? Seven months. Seven months. Yeah. <laughs> Don't drop it. Hang on, hang on. One hand. Hold on. stop doing anything, preacher, don't stop doing this. I want to have 
all the kids, all the men, go to and kiss your mother, your wife, your grandmother, your mother-in-law, whoever like that, if she's here. So get up however long it takes and go and do that right now. And if you see a lady that doesn't seem to have anybody present to kiss her, you have my permission to give her a kiss. Well, of course, there's a camera there. I'm not a mom, honey. No, we can't. No, go. No. Now there's somebody here I'm sure that will tell you that if you don't do that, I pull ears at the door of anybody that does it. So if you haven't got your, your kiss yet, some of you are still going at it, you take as long as you need, make sure you get one, and if you don't, you tell me, and I'll pull an ear. That's one of the nicest things I think ever goes on in the church. So. Everybody done now. They're still doing some hugging yet. Now, I want all the mothers who are present here today to stand. You are a mother. Stand. group of ladies. Now how many of you are grandmas too? See your hands. Boy, good share of those. Mm -hmm. Definitely can't wait. Grandma to be. Grandma to be. How many great grandmas? One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, I know you're all great, but how many, do we have any great, great grandmas? No, it's up here, the only great, great grandma? Okay. Let's give them all a hand. Now, I want to take a moment and I want to pray for all these ladies and fellows, kids, whoever, if one of those ladies standing there belongs to you, would you pray for them? Let's bow our heads. Thank you so much, Lord, for each one of these precious ladies present here this morning in our congregation. Many of them are a vital part of this congregation. Thank you for how you have helped them with what I think is probably the hardest job in the world, to be a mother. Bless them. Not just on this day, but bless them. Bless their children. Bless their grandchildren. Bless their great-grandchildren. May they grow up and call these precious ladies blessed. And Lord, if these ladies that are standing here are trying to live for you, may their families follow in their footsteps. And I pray for those, Lord, that they have burdens for this morning. Kids and grandkids and great-grandkids and daughters-in-laws and son-in-laws and whatever. 
I pray, Lord, if they're a good mother, I'm sure the prayer of their heart more than anything else today would not be to get a big flower or get taken out to dinner or be told they're appreciated or anything like that. I'm sure the best present they could get would be to see their kids and their grandkids come to Jesus. Amen. So I pray you'll help them to see that in the days ahead. Bless them all real good, Lord. And for that we will thank and praise you. For we ask it in the Matzos name in Jesus, of, of Jesus. Amen. Now just stay there for a moment, lady. We want to wish, if you haven't got it by now, every mother here a happy Mother's Day. We have a gift for all of our mothers present that you may pick up at the door as you leave here this morning. And as soon as we dismiss with prayer, I'm asking that all of our mothers present would you come to the choir loft for a picture, a group picture before you go? It will only take just a few moments. So please stay for the picture so we can remember that you were here today and that people who will be looking at our Facebook page this afternoon will know you were here. Now if you think, I'm, I'm not going to do that, I'm going to duck out. What is your neighbor going to think? If you've been trying to get them to church and they look at our Facebook page and don't even see your picture up there on Mother's Day, they're going to think, you mean you didn't even go to church on Mother's Day? So please, come up for the picture before, we, before you go. Let's bow our heads and I'm going to ask our only great-great-grandmother if she would dismiss us in prayer. Lois, please.